Hello everyone and welcome to uh, Payama Javan TV. My name is Behruz Bahmani. Uh, I'm the English language editor of Payama Javan. Um, we are pleased to kick off our series of profiles on what we're calling our local heroes. Uh, these are people in our community who are doing outstanding work and obviously deserve our you know, recognition and admiration. So um, today we're very honored and happy to be talking with Ross uh, Mirkirimi, who is the San Francisco's uh, first Iranian American sheriff. Um, this is obviously one of the highest uh, public uh, offices uh, held by an Iranian American in the United States. Um, uh, Ross is no stranger to politics. Um, uh, his career is just uh, stellar in terms of that. If you look him up, you can find out all kinds of information. He uh, brought the Green Party to California uh, in 1990 uh, and then uh, obviously coordinated the Ralph Nader's uh, famous campaign for president. Um, he also um, worked on uh, Matt Gonzalez's very close uh, race with Gavin Newsom. Uh, that's when I first um, heard about Ross and first met him. Um, and uh, in, in 2003, uh, Matt Gonzalez almost uh, won the mayor's office. Um, in 2005, Ross ran for his own political office in um, San Francisco, and then he won several elections as a supervisor in the famous District 5, which is the famous uh, Haight-Ashbury District, which is a historical legacy uh, uh, district in you know American politics. So he's been at the forefront of not only you know uh, Iranian achievement but also American political life. Um, in 2011, Ross surprised us by not running for mayor of San Francisco and then instead chose to a different career path and went into the sheriff's office. And so we are very happy to welcome Ross to our studio um, and to spend some time talking to him. So thank you for coming by today. Thank you. Salam. <laughs> Salam. Well, let's get into it. Um, uh, what is the sheriff? Do what is what is the San Francisco sheriff? There, you know, we know that there's CHP, that there's pol, pol, you know city police, but you know exactly. Tell us a little bit. What does the sheriff do? And you know, what is your day, average day like? And you know, what are you doing as sheriff of San Francisco? Well, sheriffs throughout the state of California and the United States are elected. The police are not, and we are the constitutional office in the eyes of our uh, state government. I have the statutory authority that has enabled me to do things that a police chief would not be able to do. But San Francisco is unique because we're the only city and county in the state of California. So simply put, the police have city, I have county. And the police are the 911 responders for emergencies. We do just about everything else. Um, we're well known for our incarceration system of managing the jail systems in San Francisco. Um, but we have a very active law enforcement, public safety bureau of pursuing fugitives, uh, people that are on warrants, um, and certainly assisting other law enforcement agencies uh, in the need of an emergency or crime, et cetera. And uh, a number of other duties, such as protection of courts and government buildings. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yes. Um, so when uh, when you just you know why did you why did you shift from the mayor's race because we all thought you were going to go run for mayor so w what was it that shifted you away from going for the mayor or was that even ever on your on your radar and we didn't know it or you know so what made you decide to go over to the sheriff's office <laughs> well actually I think that the the, the community um, was very outspoken about wanting me to run for mayor, but right. I never once <laughs> gestured that I was. Um, but the community, you know, um, can be very influential, our community, and I appreciated the, the vote of confidence. But what people might not know or have forgotten is that before I was elected to the Board of Supervisors, our version of a city council, but there isn't a city council, so it's a county government, I was a member of the district attorney's office for nine years in San Francisco, and I actually graduated from the San Francisco uh, Police Academy many years ago as president of the class. So I had law enforcement in my young career. Um, and many of the issues that I injected into a law enforcement career in San Francisco have now carried me forward uh, as an elected, major elected, city countywide as a sheriff. And I believe that law enforcement, typically in the United States, has sort of been left up to people with more conservative mindsets. And I don't think we should have 
uh, ceded that territory just to people who might be right of center. I think that people with independent populist views have a place in law enforcement, and that's where I sticked on my career even as a supervisor. Right. Um, you've been traditionally a, a, what we call a progressive uh, at, 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 at any level, whether it was um, getting rid of plastic bags in San Francisco or your stances on um, um, you know, uh, ma marijuana and med medical marijuana and things like that. What, are, what kind of progressive ideas have you brought to, I've been reading a little bit about what you've been doing in the sheriff's office, in, in the jails and things like that. What kind of progressive ideas have you been working on and what, what's interesting about what you've been bringing to There are many, but I want the two examples you cited, um, there were laws that I passed that at the time were only unique to San Francisco and the United States. And I have to say have now gained uh, both national and international attention and traction where other municipalities and governments are passing the laws that I initiated, starting with the plastic bag ban, which was the first law of its kind hemispherically. And then San Francisco was the first on decriminalizing medical marijuana, which I also had wrote the city's first regulations that have now been adopted by many states on medical marijuana in Washington, Colorado. And I was awarded you know, a major civic award for that as well. On law enforcement side, as the sheriff's department, I'm the first sheriff in the history of San Francisco that presides over the lowest jail population ever per capita. We are seeing a phenom occur, uh, and that is a rapidly declining jail population right now. And we're not seeing the corresponding uptick in crime as one would expect if, in fact, somebody might say, well, you yeah, have nobody in jail, but they're committing crimes or not being prosecuted. It's not the case. So what we're beginning to see is real results that I think have really defied the U.S. prison system, the state prison system, and even San Francisco about uh, getting better improvements on recidivism, anti-repeat offender right. rates. And that's through, we have the first high school in the United States, a charter high school in the United States, is embedded in our jail system. Um, I took advantage of Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, and legislated, and the old legislator in me, legislated that the Sheriff's Department be an official designator of signing people up in Obamacare. Why? Because 30,000 people get booked in our jail system. Many of them do not have, a high majority do not have health insurance or access to health care, but yet they have substance abuse disorders and they suffer from mental illness. And if people coming in my custody, and we do everything we possibly can, but leave without insurance intact, well then we shouldn't be surprised that they come right back in my custody right. again. Right. So, um, uh, most uh, Iranians, they will go into a career in technology or they'll go into some of the sciences and stuff like that. So, w why did you decide to go into politics? What was it about, I mean, why didn't you go into a technical degree like you're supposed to? Well, in some ways I kind of blame my, <laughs> my family, my father and mother. Uh, my father, uh, certainly from Iran, and when he uh, immigrated to the United States and went to Chicago where he was putting himself through school where he met my mother where I was born. Um, he started off as a security guard at the YMCA while he was going to university in Chicago. And um, I'm sure it was a job that paid practically nothing. But he stayed 37 years, maybe more, with the YMCA until his death. And he um, really matured as a young man to somebody to the end of his, to his passing of being a public servant himself through the nonprofit system. But he he became one of the top uh, executives. Of, I mean, of the top people at the. He was a vice president. He ended up uh, rising to the level of vice president right, so of the YMCA system. I mean, it was a system. complete career path. It was a cre yeah. uh, complete career path, but it wasn't corporate. It was in a nonprofit right. world that catered to many. Uh, disadvantaged communities and so uh, I got the fumes of that and then for my mother um, even after my folks had divorced I still have enough rapport with both um, she became the uh, director for the Commission of Human Rights uh, in the state of Rhode Island and so you can't help not being exposed to that level of sentiment and they often you know encourage me to challenge even challenge them and so I think that's how people know me, is an independent-minded person. I am progressive, 
but I challenge, and I've been known to surprise people, ergo, who would have expected somebody that they think he's a green, a left, progressive, whatever, to be now the sheriff of a major city in the United States? Because I believe, philosophically, bookends can meet together, and great change can come out of that. Um, where did you grow up? Did you, I, I think you were, um, because your parents divorced, you were kind of spending some time with your Two dad places in primarily. So I was born in Chicago, part of my youth in Chicago, and the other part of my youth in the state of Rhode Island. Uh, went to undergraduate in St. Louis, Missouri, never been west of the Mississippi. Came out to San Francisco in 1984 to finish my degree at the Language Institute in Monterey. I was so smitten and seduced by Northern California, San Francisco, Monterey, that my whole life plan changed and just had to live here, and that's where I've been ever since. Right. Um, so um, you're you, you're doing something new at the sheriff's. Um, you you've got a newsletter, I think, that you're working on that you're sending out to people. How you know how can we, uh, as in the Iranian community, can you know help you at least uh, maybe get on your newsletter and or contact you if you have any. Yeah, any I appreciate the in. question. So, <clears throat> in maybe you can uh, show some kind of. Uh, uh, subtitle of it too, but uh, they can email me uh, certainly, and, and I actually answer my all my own email. Yes, it, he does. He answers his emails. It can be a real pain in the butt. I want yeah. you to know because I get a few hundred a day, but I do. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so it's uh, Ross R O S S dot period uh, Mir Karimi M I R K A R I M I at S F for San Francisco at S F gov gov dot org and it comes directly to me and it's electronic newsletter monthly uh, and we'll put you on our list I'll acknowledge you we'll put you on our list and keep people posted I don't really have a budget in the sheriff's department although we have a sizable budget I I have a staff by the way of over 1100 people and a budget of approximately 190 million dollars and so it's sizable we're about a medium-sized department medium to large in the city uh, San Francisco, but I don't really have a budget for PR or anything. So this is the best we can do to kind of uh, invent a way to keep in touch with people. Right. Um, so Ross, how can we, um, how can we as the Iranian community, um, you know, um, help you out? Is you know, what what can we do um, to help you in your position as sheriff in San Francisco? Well, um, <laughs> thanks for asking a, a politician that question. <laughs> um, first of all, when you opened up your remarks. Um, I want you to know for me, I proudly affiliate with the Iranian American community and I'm not just the first Iranian American sheriff in San Francisco, I'm the first Iranian American sheriff in the United States, um, of any city small and large. And I know that because sheriff networks are a bit of a fraternity and you know these sort of, um, uh, these milestones. Um, and that really, I know it's not the mayor, you know, as we talked about earlier, mayor's race per se. Um, but it's, it's really important in stature, and I expect that, like my run and win for sheriff in 2011, my re-election is 2015, they'll throw everything they got um, at me again, and I um, will do everything I can to make sure that I stay. And I've been elected before in the past because of the uh, Persian-Iranian-American community. Um, they have um, contributed generously, and I've enjoyed the experience of being on the campaign road and in between campaigns of staying in contact with our community and reporting back as to what's going on. And I like that. I'm not a small talk kind of guy. I'm the kind of guy that really wants to build the rapport with the community so the community is introduced maybe vicariously through me and through others who get involved in politics and in public policy because I don't want our community to think of this as a negative experience. Even what I may have gone through, I do not want them to think of it as a ne negative experience. I want them to think of it as a positive, healthy experience because our community is a sleeping giant. In the state of California in particular, as well as the United States, Iranian American numbers uh, are large. Large enough, in my opinion, that in pockets of Southern California and Northern California, Bay Area, and sporadically elsewhere, um, we have an opportunity uh, to bridge, not just from our well-specialized success in the technology world or in the medical world, et cetera, or the academic world, but into politics. And people should consider that. And I think that second and third generation Iranians will also, I think, uh, consider that because they're coming up also in an American way. 
And so um, I ask people uh, to contribute to my campaign. I'm going to give you my personal email now. I gave you my work email. So for contributing to my personal uh, world, my campaign, would my email address, no oh, man, I, this is a first. So it's rmirk, R-M-I-R-K, at msn.com, R-M-I-R-K at msn.com. The contribution limits will be up to $500 per person. It's the San Francisco law, and checks are made out to re-elect Sheriff Ross Mirkarimi. Great. And then the other ways to get involved is, I'm going to need volunteers, but we're about a year and a half from the election, but this is the time when the simmering starts for fundraising and everything else, and, and um, I'm going to need everybody's help. All right. Well, I think we can write you a lot of five hundred dollars checks. Well, and, and I also want to see folks too. It's it, it tell you we we're grassroots. Yeah. We're totally. I mean, you mentioned the Green Party. I mean, I'm Democrat now, but I but I co-founded the Green Party in California because I, I was just tired that there was this evacuation of the left of center, and there needed to be a more modernized consciousness. Exactly. You know, and I bring that independent politics even in my position now. Excellent. We're glad that you're doing well at the sheriff's office. We Thank think you. that um, um, uh, obviously your progressive uh, ideas are, are definitely having results. We, we love reading about them in the papers and we look forward to uh, you winning the 2015 uh, uh, election and uh, continuing on your successful path in politics. So thanks for spending this time with us. And Thank you. Look very forward much. to talking to you soon. Thank you. What uh, a office. Thank you. <laughs>